Let's take a look today on how to do a painterly effect using the mixer brushes in Adobe Photoshop. So what I have here is a basic stock image, I'm going to show you this right now, of a gal I got from Adobe Stock and I've very loosely masked her out, very loosely. And what you see here around the edging is you'll see she's got a bit of a halo going on on the edging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint with black on a layer that is grouped to the base layer to get rid of that. Let me show you that now. I'm going to make a new layer, darken edges. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to group this layer, darken edges, to the stock image. I'm just going to hold down the Option key and click on the line in between the two layers. And now I'm just going to pick a paintbrush, average size, and I'm going to just paint with dark, color black. Do you see my black is my foreground color here? And I'm just going to very loosely and quickly paint around the edges. It's really nothing very exciting. It's really down and dirty. The nice thing about this painterly look is you kind of don't have to be so precise. It's more about a vibe. Now the one thing I do want to tell you about that layer, that darken edges, you're probably going to want to put that on multiply. All right. Now it may or may not be too dark depending on what you're creating, but right now I'm going to leave it because of the painting layer. Now I've just darkened down her shirt with a basic color with hue saturation. Just did a quick hue sat move. Do you see that? Saturation is turned down and the lightness is turned down and a quick levels move. Again, these masks are really crappy. This is just for a demo and to get a vibe. Now, once you have a base image you want to do your painting with, what you want to do is create a new layer. So I'm going to make a new layer here, and I'm going to call it a uh, smudge maybe, or mixer brush. Whatever you like to, to indicate what tools you're going to use. Now, in the new Photoshop, the brushes are absolutely amazing, and I have some brushes already loaded here, but I'm going to throw them away for just a second so I can show you how I load them. Now, you can get your brushes straight off the Adobe Creative Cloud, or you may have your own. I have already saved out my ABR brushes, and I'm going to drag them by their name, the .abr file, down to my icon for Adobe Photoshop. And that is automatically going to load these brushes. Do you see they show up right here? Here are the brushes I've already predetermined I want to use for this demo. Now, the brush I'm particularly fond of is called Kyle Real Oil. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Or this Kyle Real Oil Sargent Fat Brush. Let's use the fat brush for this one. So once I've been in my brush palette, you can get your brush palette here by your Windows menu. All right, right there. I'm just going to click on the brush and select it. Now go up here to the menu bar on the top, you guys. Check out this. This is what you want to be careful of. You want to make sure you have sample all layers, sample all layers, and this little icon up here in the upper left hand corner, I'm going to click the delta to clean the brush. So the brush has no paint on it, no paint at all. It's going to sample all layers. And if you look over here to the right, I've made a blank layer that I'm going to now start painting or smudging. So I'm going to start here in the hair area and I'm going to click and drag. And just for this demo, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Here's the cool thing about these brushes is you don't have to load it with paint or texture. It's going to grab it from the image underneath. So with the greater than and less than icon, I am reducing the size of the brush. I'm just using a quick key to do it. And then I can go in and make these as small as I like. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth, very much like how you paint. And I'm just clicking and dragging, click, drag, click, drag. And what happens is Photoshop is grabbing the colors from underneath and putting them on a blank layer. It's actually pretty, pretty simple, but the technology is fantastic. As much as I'd like to consider myself a painter, which I absolutely 100% am not, uh, Photoshop is really great. allows you to become one using these tools. You just got to have a good base image to start from. So I'm starting from the back of the hair and pulling forward or starting from the top and pulling back. Either way you get a different result because it's pulling paint or color from one side to the other. And you just go at it and go at it until you get the results you like. I'm going to show you what I came up with and talk about some different techniques. You can make the brush bigger again using the greater than symbols. And this is where you just really want to find your happy place and just start painting. It's so much fun, seriously. 
brought me back to the land of illustration that I once fancied going into. I wanted to be an illustrator, but I wasn't a very good renderer, and I find these new tools allow me to reach back into that palette. All right. So I think you get the idea here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer just for this demo. I'm going to turn on what I had done before so I can show you how I created this image last time. All right, so I basically have a Smudge Kyle Real Oil Sargent Flat layer, only it's on 50% opacity. I'm going to fill it to 100 right now. Now look at the name. I called it Smudge Kyle Real Oil Sargent Flat because I think it's handy to come back to a job and know what brush we, you used it's really easy to forget after a few weeks. Now, what ended up happening, I'm gonna turn this on, I'm gonna turn that layer off and on to look. You know, I kind of like that result, but it was a little, a little heavy at the time. So what I did is I reduced the opacity to 50% on the layer, and then I duplicated the layer again, again at 50% opacity, only this time I very loosely painted it back in only in certain areas. So effectively, what I was doing is adding paint back in. I wasn't repainting it. I was just using the layer I had already done. And then up here, I did once again on the alternative heavier paint look simply by adding more paint. And then at the end of this, I mean, I kind of like the result. I thought it was pretty fun. I added a pattern texture. Down here on your uh, layer palette, you have the option to load a pattern. And I picked a pattern that comes with Photoshop and comes with all Kyle's brushes and I picked gouache light on watercolor. I thought it looked the best for this particular piece and that gave me a pattern. I changed the scale to 200% and I put the pattern on overlay mode. I'm going to put it on normal. That's, excuse me, I'm putting it on norm, normal mode and the opacity is at 17%. So that's a lot, right? I just covered a lot. Let's throw this away and do it again. So here I've got my basic paint image. Let me zoom out for a minute. I go to my delta down here and I pick pattern overlay. Well, I don't want that one, thank you very much. I click on the little delta here and I've got all these choices. Look at all these. I have tons of patterns I've loaded up. You can get all these through Photoshop. Now I went to gouache light on watercolor and I'm gonna hit the OK or return key. Now the problem is the pattern was too tight for me so I changed the scale to 200. Now, I want to change the blending mode so I can see my paint. I'm going to put this one on overlay. And that's cool, but it's a little heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opacity of my pattern layer down to about, I don't know, 20, 17, something like that. All right, so this way, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got an original girl, masked out quickly, kind of crappy, but it doesn't matter because we're going to smudge all this paint over the edges doubled up the layer and then put a texture over the top. Hopefully this will help you get started using these brushes. The smudge and mixer brushes are amazing. Over here this one happens to be a mixer brush. There's also smudge brushes and this is all covered on the Creative Live class. Hope you enjoy!